what's going on Wolfpack Nation thank you all so much again for tuning back in here as we as we continue this conversation here with Matt here from from fourth and dude uh, which is a Boston College podcast and uh, basically wanted to bring him on basically to talk about this upcoming Boston College and state game which is huge to say the least and uh, if you haven't checked out part one make sure to go and check that one out here first before continuing on this one so but one thing Matt uh, that uh, that we kind of left off with from the last uh, part is talking about Jeff and uh, you know obviously he's been super impressive coming to Boston College and seeing what he's done so far and I think all of us you know are pretty much saying I mean I just couldn't imagine that some, you know, this, especially with, with college football, the way it is, there's always coaching jobs coming up, especially big coaching jobs that I, I, I would be surprised if, if, if boss college can hold on to Jeff for long. But I mean, again, it, it's, I mean, I, I guess I wanted to kind of ask, I mean, do you ever see Boston college? Cause again, the history wise, Boston college can compete with anybody. I mean, Boston college has, has some of the biggest names in football period. And so, I mean, do you ever see, you know, Boston College taking a next step in terms of uh, competing when it comes to spending, possibly? Like, you know, if Jeff said, hey, listen, you know, I'm getting offered, you know, from USC for six million a year, or seven million a year. Do you ever see Boston College taking that next step and making that investment in a guy like Jeff Halfley? No, uh, yeah. pro- probably, probably not. Probably not in the seven million <laughs> range. Um, you know, we're, we're a yeah. academic Jesuit institution and, and academics or sorry, athletics, sorry, has, has never really been on the forefront of Father Leahy's mind, um, which sucks because mm-hmm. we are the school that had the Flutie effect in the 80s. Right. And Doug Flutie did what he did. And, yeah. you know, admissions went through the roof. BC became, you know, a solid academic school as a result of that. People have done studies on it. It's a real thing. Um, so, you know, it's unfortunate. But but no, it seems like, you know, unless there's a change uh, in leadership from a university standpoint, I don't see us necessarily getting ever to that level. Um, what I will say is, you know, the AD Pat Kraft and, and Mark Jarman before him have done a really good job trying to do as much as they can. They, they've really upgraded the facilities. We have a brand new indoor practice facility that was built a couple of years ago. Um, they've done a ton of upgrades nice. in the in- in-game stadium ex- experience. We've, we're paying Halfley, I think, something like 3-5, you know, maybe in the four range, something like that. Private schools, so you don't really know for sure. Um, but something in that range. And, and what Halfley was able to do he, when he was negotiating, you know, his deal is, hey, guys, i got to pay assistance. So from what we've heard, and talk is cheap, from what we've heard, they've really increased the, uh, the assistant coach pool. So little things like that, I think, go a long way. We're never going to get – you know, we're, it's going to be hard for us to compete just from a recruiting footprint, right? We're never going to get the top talent that yeah. exists in the Southeast. Um, but, yeah. you know, I think overall, if we can get, if we can just stay, if we can just stay in the mid tier of the ACC when it comes to spending and overall commitment, I think half could stay. Half's got a family. Um, he said a couple times now that this is a place he wants to be long-term. He wants to build this thing the right way. And um, I don't know. I mean, he's got a heck of a resume. And um, like we were talking about last episode, I mean, there's a lot of programs in this country that that would want this guy with his professional pedigree, um, as well as what he's done yeah. in, in a short time in the uh, in the college ranks. So we'll see. But yeah, you know, one thing with uh, like a guy like Jeff Halfley is as a guy that comes to mind that actually is even from the ACC itself that that kind of reminds me a lot of maybe the possibly the Jeff Halfley situation, which again, obviously time will tell. Is a guy like Dave Clawson at Wake Forest too? I mean. I think for, for me, and I know all of us, especially at Tuffy Talk, you know, we, we've said multiple times, like, how is a guy like Dave Clawson, who has done what he's been able to do at Wake Forest, still at Wake Forest, that when at the end of the day, he could easily go somewhere else and make a lot more money. He could have a lot more spending uh, to hire assistants, to do recruiting. I mean, because then they, again, a school like Wake Forest, where it's primarily a academic school, that that that's all they're really, you know, that that's going to be their first priority, no matter what athletics does. And uh, so, you know, it, it's, but it's kind of one of those things that, you know, for a coach, you know, a, who a lot of them, you know, want to go after these big time jobs, like, you know, the Tennessee's, the USC's, Alabama's, the Auburn's, but at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're making a risk because, you know, you could just, you know, it, it could possibly be that maybe Dave Clawson is getting all these calls, but then he's, you know, saying, Hey, you know, I want to stay here. I like Winston Salem. You know, I want to be here. You know, I, I have security here. Uh, but then, you know, you look at a guy like, you know, for example, like Butch Jones, which the reason why I bring up a guy like Butch Jones is not necessarily hating him by any means or saying that Butch Jones is one or the other. But I'm saying, you know, he took a risk. He went from Cincinnati to Tennessee. He fell flat on his face. 
and now he's coaching back at Arkansas State. So again, it's it's you know, do you want to be jumping around or do you want to be a guy that stays at Wake Forest? You know, for if he wants to coach for forty years, he'll coach at Wake Forest for forty years. I guarantee you, they will never get rid of him. Simple as that. So I mean, you know, and and, and maybe that could possibly be the possibility at at Boston College, which I think you and all Boston College fans would flip over backwards if that were the case. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think the biggest. I mean, you guys even with Doran know how important consistency is, right? I mean, there's there's no guarantees in doing a coaching search. Whereas what are we seeing? Like Mike, Mike Norvell at FSU was a no-brainer pick, and now we're seeing what's happening there, although they did have a nice win this weekend. But, I mean, you can hire the right guy, and, uh, you know, it can still go poorly, right? So, right. yeah, we, we sort of hit the lottery with, with Halfley, we think, right? Yeah. And a lot of this is premature. A lot of this is based on what, where we think he's going to be, right? We sure. haven't necessarily accomplished all that much yet when you think about it. Right. So far, it's been it's been pretty good, but we're really we're banking on the future half, as opposed to you know what he's done so far. I mean, everything's set in the right direction. He's yep. setting this program to, up to succeed. Yep. So yeah, we're hoping to get at least a couple more years, if nothing else, to yep. uh, to see where he can take this thing. So, but now we got to jump in though, because because I do I, I mean I know one of the big reasons why, we, why I wanted to bring you on was to kind of talk about this game coming up. And so, what are your initial thoughts? You know, looking at this game this this weekend against the NC State Wolfpack. Yeah, I mean, it's a big one. It's one of the biggest games, probably the biggest BCNC State game that I can remember in, in quite some time. I mean, really? historically, right? I mean, historically, yeah. this game hasn't, yeah, this has pretty. conference implications, conference championship implications. Absolutely. The winner of this probably, probably becomes the front runner, right? Depending on Clemson. Right? Well, again, Depending again, Wake Forest. Tiebreaker. Again, Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Wake Forest will take care of them in November. Right. I'm not worried about that. But no, point okay. taken. Point taken. Yeah. Um, listen, it's a good matchup. It's two really good teams. Um, you know, we've I've talked a little bit about what our offense can do. You know, based on what you guys have done to date, we both played Clemson really, really tough. Um, you guys got them at, at home, which I think was, you know, obviously an advantage. We had to go into Death Valley in front of that raucous crowd. We did have the benefit. They were a little more banged up. But, like, if you look at the, you know, we look at the trends that are properly on our podcast all the time. If you if we look at common opponents, like, we're pretty much, it's a dead even matchup, it seems like, right? Oh, yeah. We even have similar philosophies. Um, you know, we both have talented wideouts. We both have talented running backs, good O lines, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a couple weak spots on the defense, I think, on, on, on both sides. So, I think if one thing, you know, overall to me, it's, it's going to be a one possession game. Um, is my, I won't give away my, my prediction if, if we're going to go, you know, down that road. But I, to me, it's an evenly matched game. I can't wait. To, I'm, going to, I'm going to be there on Saturday. Are you guys going or, or is anyone no. going to trip up to Boston? No. Not for this one, uh, but yeah, no, not for this one. But uh, uh, you know, but I've I've been to Boston College before, and I definitely look to look forward to going back here in the near future. But we've heard you know. we've heard it's one of the more underrated as far as environments yes. to go to. Like it's uh, we had yeah. in fact I think we talked to the uh, NC State equipment manager who actually we had him on one time, um, and he said this. He said that. Yeah, absolutely. When it's a big game and like especially prime time, like that crowd's going to be rocking. I mean. We don't have the all day tailgates and it's not, you know, the whole RV situation. And, and actually we went down to Raleigh back in 2018 and had an awesome time. We had games sucked. We had a great time in Raleigh, right. hung out with a bunch of the locals, you know, hit, hit all the downtown spots. It's not quite like that. It's a little bit, you have to temper your expectations and it's still the Northeast. There's a lot of rules and uh, you can only you know start three or four hours before, before the kickoff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a small stadium, but it's an intimate environment. And if the, the students stay, it's a close game. Uh, it's, it's, it's underrated. I like that. That's a much better word than we're used to, you know, <laughs> but most people describe it as, you know, not, not the true ACC environment. You're looking right. At, but it's solid. Yeah. It's yeah. solid. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm just curious because I know like, I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are, where, from what you've seen this season, what is Boston college's biggest strengths and what's their biggest weakness? Like if you were a team that was like, you know, if you were NC state, hypothetically speaking, how would you attack Boston College? Would, because just just for somebody who watches them all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's different on paper versus, uh, you know, what it's actually been this year. Sure. Coming into this season, we had, you know, the, the most talented wideouts in the conference, or at least up there, right? Mm-hmm. And I already named a few, but headlined by Zay Flowers. We have this big six seven tight end called, you named Trey Barry. Um, so that's strength number one is, is the wideouts. Strength number two I mean, we're O-line you, baby. I mean, we got, yeah, yeah. we returned so much talent. 
And again, on paper, when you talk about experience, NFL prospects, we got guys that have been all ACC guys going back three or four years. Um, so, so when it comes to strengths, that's really what it, what it is, what it should be. Um, in actuality, it's really been the run game that sort of came out of nowhere. Um, Pat Garwo has been, you know, one of the top, uh, you know, really the bright spot of this offense. He's taken over as the lead running back. He's been dominant. Um, he, he's is it is it Garwo? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Garwo. Pat Garwo. Garwo. Okay. Get get used to hearing that name because it's gonna be uh, you're gonna be hearing a lot on. Yeah, Saturday. I was gonna say like, man, he's. <laughs> hey. he's I'm looking at I was looking at the stats. I was we talked this guy. I mean, so just for the, for our listeners for this episode, he's he's averaging six point four yards per play on. And in 469 yards in the season. So six and a half yards per, per rush on five touchdowns. Um, and that's 73 rushing attempts. Pretty solid. So, I mean, he's getting yeah. it done. <laughs> yeah. Third in the ACC, 94 yards per game. He had uh, 175 yards and two touchdowns against Missouri. Now, Missouri has one of the worst defenses I've ever seen, but still, you know, <laughs> yeah. he was, uh, he was dominant. And a lot of that comes down to our, I'll give the O line credit. Um, you guys might not know this, but, you know, BC fans have been all over this for, you know, going back to last season. We switched to the zone blocking scheme. Oh, and yeah. it sort of, you know, it sort of threw. And we also switched some guys a lot. We, we put guards at tackle and tackle at guards. We sort of mixed up what was the strength of this team last year, in my opinion, unnecessarily. It kind of threw it in flux a little bit. But it seems like we're starting to figure this out. And we were dominant against Missouri, a little less so against Clemson, but who isn't? Um but I think it's it really is the run game that is the key, just just like it has been. You guys remember in 2019 when we when we had what 500 rushing yards against you guys. Sorry to bring that up, but yeah. hey, if we can run yeah. the football, it all opens right. up all sorts of possibilities and, for the offense. And, you know, That's been our biggest strength to date. Who was that? Yeah, and you, was that was that AJ Dillon? AJ Dillon had I think 200. David yeah. Bailey had another now, 200. Hey, who was the guy before yeah. AJ Dillon? I was trying to think of his name, the running back. Uh, on, Andre Williams. That's who it was. Andre Williams. Yes. Uh, yeah. Remember he like Andre went Williams. off against us when that was at 2016 or something like that, 2015. And I was like, uh, he yeah, had like the biggest, yards. he had the biggest like thighs I remember ever seeing on a running back. You were like, <laughs> I know he hasn't been. And, and actually, huh? and actually, I got a weird memory with these stats. I think Montel Harris before him lit you guys up for like 400 rushing. Yeah. Games. So I don't know what you guys are doing defensively, but it seems like our, our guys have breakout games. Against yeah. That was to me, that was, that was the end of TOB. Early years of Dave Dorn trying to take the garbage dump that TOB left us in as far as the <laughs> roster. So, before we continue, we want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has your whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. I feel yeah. like – so you mentioned zone yeah. blocking. I feel like State has for a long – for since Dave Doran has been around, he seems to have that particular type of run scheme just kind of – so I think you'll see some similarities in the run style. And yeah. uh, you mentioned Zay Flowers. He's a North Carolina guy, so that's pretty neat. Yeah, we know. So we we know his name all too well, all too well. That was a miss. That was yeah. a miss. But see, guys. I know. Yeah, and I, I thought about that too. It's like you know they. I think he was like a two or three star guy, and he ends up exploding. Yep. So it's mm-hmm. like I, State has often recruited a lot of three star guys. You hear, I actually hear a lot of from these big name schools that will go and recruit. Like they'll say, like, oh yeah, we get all the five stars, but we really need the three stars that really want it. Which is kind of funny when you hear that. And <laughs> I mean, if you know. Russell Wilson was a two-star guy that, that makes sense. nobody saw. Yeah. And it's just, just kind of things happen. But it's, yeah, when you look at it, you now you're like, that was North Carolina. And, hey, y'all work for ba- for basketball, too. Y'all kind of had to get too far off subject. Y'all's two leading scorers, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Robinson and I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, Kai Bowman. Kai Bowman, both from North Carolina. So y'all just mm-hmm. love North Carolina athletes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys get an embarrassment of riches down there, it seems like. <laughs> As, as Eli Drinkwood said, there's not much oh, yeah. going on in, yeah. in the Northeast. But no, so. I'm, I'm uh, curious, yeah. though, because you right. mentioned that the run game is so strong. And I was looking at that, too, because, I, I mean, like when you see Garo's averages and then even I, – I see you got Alex Sinkfield and Travis Levy, uh, Levy. Do those guys play often, or is it mainly just Garo? You know, it's funny. At the beginning of the season, this was a wide-open competition, and Garo was like third, maybe fourth, as far as like on the depth chart. Mm. Like 
I, it was, it was, you know, Travis Levy has been here for five, six years. It was kind of his job once David Bailey hit the transfer portal. Um, we got Alex Singfield, who uh, transferred over from West Virginia. And then there was a true freshman, Xavier Coleman, who was a stud in the spring game and, mm-hmm. and was, you know, off the charts and, and practice and all that. And Garo didn't just frankly wasn't that good last year. So he was kind of an afterthought, but he's improved a ton. He's hitting the holes hard. He seems to be making the right read every single time. And once he gets to that second level, he has deceptive speed. He's a bit of a bowling ball, but he can get cranking in the open field. So um, as far as one guy, one guy you need to stop on Saturday, it's Zay Flowers, but a, a close seconds back on. I, I was going to say, because when you look at the numbers, yeah. though, one thing for me when, I'm, when we're looking at these, you guys clearly have like running the ball is what it looks like. So you're playing to your strength. But when I look at – and tell me if I'm wrong on this. But as a state fan, when I look at the stats – I see Boston College. Uh, I see for um, for uh, what's the guy's name? Grozel. He has his average is like um, is not like I would say not as good as obviously as Jer- Jerkovic. So to me, if I'm a st- what would you say that if your state would you dare uh, would you want to dare Boston College to throw the ball against you? Is that so just commit to like stopping the run and make see if Grozel can just throw against you? Is that how you would do it, or would you do something different? Yeah, I probably would. I mean, you have to be careful looking at stats this early on in the season. It's been a really yeah. strange year for us because we've had we've had just an impossibly weak schedule the first three games. Even Missouri was pretty bad. So, and then we've had Clemson. So it's like yeah. we haven't mm-hmm. really had a true peer test at this point. So it's sort of been a game by game thing. Right. Sometimes Denny mm-hmm. will throw the ball ten true. times. Other times he'll throw it, and he threw it 40 times against Clemson because they said, all right, we're not going to let the running back beat us. We're going to make Denny Grissel beat us. That seemed to be a pretty good strategy. He had a decent game. Um, but I will say, in a, in, a, in a perfect world, BC is able to establish the run, yep. and then that sets up play action and one-on-one downfield. So, yeah, you guys can stop the one or stop the run. We become one-dimensional. That's probably the recipe for Yeah, and I would for say NC for us, State. too, you're going to notice from an NC State um, that we we have not – we have a three three five defense. We've started that in the last year or two since we've hired um, Tony, Tony Gibson, Gibson from mm-hmm. West Virginia, and he had a he, when he was at West Virginia for a few few years. They had like a top fifteen defense, and they he kind of dropped off there for a little bit, and now he's here, and it's kind of starting to pick up again because State's defense has been really good. But one thing I think will be interesting for you for Boston College fans to notice is uh, we our linebackers are our best aspect of our defense. Um, and our DBs are solid, I would say underrated. Uh, but then they're up there in stats. But we have noticed we've not get a lot of we don't get a ton of pressure from the the three man front on defense up until recently. Like we played Louisiana Tech and we got great pr- press against them. But then Clemson was the 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 you know two games before or a game of ga- or two games ago and. I, w- I was shocked at how much we got pressure, but you could know that you probably want to notice that we have like a little, we seem to maybe starting to figure out the pressure, but you may notice we're not getting a ton on the quarterback. That's feel like for state mm-hmm. to me, we, that's what we should be doing. We should be really trying to get pressure there when we may, that'd be a key, I think to the game. Yeah. And, and I'll say this too. I mean, Denny, I love the kid, but he can be turnover prone when he, you amp up the pressure. So if he's got a guy coming into his face, yeah, he doesn't always make the right read. He doesn't throw the ball away when he should. Sometimes he's fearless back there, and that's a credit to him. But he'll force things when uh, when things get accelerated. So uh, you know that was something that Clemson did a good job of, is sort of flustering him a little bit. He made a couple bad throws. Um, and Missouri, Missouri kind of had a, the same problem where they couldn't get to him, mm-hmm. and so Denny and they couldn't do anything. So we were able to run all over them. And, and Denny, yeah. Denny threw a couple deep balls when he needed to. But outside of that, but no, I mean, but to your point. Our O line was able to completely neutralize Missouri's front four and just swallowed them yeah. up. Mm-hmm. And if that happens, then C State, you guys could be in trouble. Yeah, I'd be curious about that. Now, yeah. now I'm, I'm also curious about this side of things too. Um, when you mention uh, the Clemson game, that was a heartbreaking loss for Boston College, and and I know you feel that because we've been there. We in 2016 yeah. missed that field goal, and I'm probably you probably remember that. A lot of people do. They not even fans. Um, do you think that you know it's a bye week, but do you think there's still that taste of like like because I mean as state fans we we will we'll lose a big game and it's like it'll hang over us. 
Do you get the sense, like when you've yeah. watched Halfley's teams for Boston College in the past, that they move on pretty quickly? Have there been as big of a game where they've come so close and lost? Is this is this a totally unique situation? How do you think they're going to handle <laughs> that pressure or that hangover if there taste. is any? Yeah, yeah. That's a good. So now that you say that, I'm kind of worried. What was it? Uh... <laughs> So yeah, no, so, I'm not saying so, that like back. I'm not saying no, that no, to be you're like right. a, oh well, you guys are gonna like we're gonna roll over you because of that I'm saying like no we've been there and we know what yeah, that's like. It's a real thing. So yeah. well, it's, and, yeah. and the Clemson hangover is a real thing. It is. You guys, you guys yeah. didn't play your best against Louisiana Tech despite winning the game, right? Correct. Kind of slept off through that yeah. a little bit. It's, so it, it's a it's a good point. And we've had UNC last year. They barely won. We we should have won that game, but we missed a two point conversion at the end. We. Played an egg the next week to Texas State, a terrible team that won like two games all year. Oh, wow. The Clemson game last year, we played Syracuse the next week, barely pulled one out against Syracuse. You guys all know how bad Syracuse is. So yeah, it's I'm a, I'm actually now concerned that you say that. However, that was uh, we do have the bye week now, so that that wasn't. And that's yeah. what I was going to get at too. Bye season. week so, is like could and, be the maybe it could be the best thing. And I thought right. part of me is like, but that means it's another week of thinking about the loss. Too, so I'm like, right. it could go either way, and I'm just curious if there's been any like evidence of, man, you see Halfley just we and these guys getting a loss, they don't they they flip the switch. It sounds like he's been able yeah. to do that. I think it's like Saban, like when Saban when they lose, Saban loves it because it gives them so much to work on in practice. I think Halfley's the same yeah. exact way, where it's like, all right, great, we have so many things we can fix. I still think it would have been nice to win the ball game, but I sure. think a loss could actually be better <laughs> than coming out of there thinking, oh yeah, we beat you know. A, a down Clemson team, we're undefeated, and then NC State could be yeah. not a trap game, but you know what I'm saying. No. Where yeah. yeah, like so it could actually hyper focus us and say, hey, this is now I, a must win. If we don't beat NC State, our season, our dream and, of winning the and ACC. And this is the last over, thing so. I'll say to this. I've been talking a lot, but it's it's a. Uh, I think maybe one of the benefits in that regard, as far as the whole mental hangover side of things, is it's a ranked NC State team coming into Boston yep. College, so you get mm -hmm. another opportunity. So I feel mm -hmm. like the whole oh, uh, well, if, if it were like just like a you know, let's say it was a uh, Virginia. Okay, it's Virginia. Yeah. Okay, well, who? Okay, who cares? Like it's Georgia Tech. Okay, they're not, but it's a ranked team that got a number next to their name. Oh, we can get up for that one. So I feel like that might actually be good for Boston College. It makes me worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Night game too. I mean, yeah, th this is we'll get up for this game. I'm not worried about that. But there is sometimes that weird Clemson hangover. So we'll, it was yeah. two weeks ago. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I'm hopeful, but half half's a good coach. Half will get these guys focused. If you, if you have time, go to the BC football Twitter page and look at like the videos of Halfley in the locker room, hyping up the team pregame. Like I, I would run through a brick wall for this guy. Like he's, he's, he jacks me up. So I mean, he's, he's great. So hopefully not again, night game and you guys are, are ranked. I think that's a good point. Yep. So, uh, so I know we're kind of wrapping up here. So, so I'll kind of, I, I know, you know, the best way to wrap it up here is so give me your prediction, Matt. So, so when, you know, when you're, when you're talking to your BC fans, what, what are you saying to them prediction wise? All right. So definitely one possession game. Um, you know, our biggest weakness is pass rush. And mm. I'm hoping that we use the bye week to figure out how to get pressure mm. to the quarterback. We just, we haven't been able to get there with four. We haven't really dialed up much in the way of, you know, really exotic blitzes. Um, but I'm hoping we can figure out a way to, to get the linebackers. And I think that's the biggest, the single biggest thing, not only for this game, but for our season going forward is, is like, we're like one of the worst country or one of the worst teams in the, in the, in the, uh, country in sacks as are you, I think last I checked. Yeah. I got uh, mentioned the whole three man front. We've just not gotten a lot of pressure. We're starting to, yeah. but not a ton. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that, you know, to, to get, to knock Leary off his game, I think we got to get pressure to him. I agree. Um, you know, like I, I talked about too, against Missouri, we really dominated in the trenches and we were able to set up the run game. Um, I think that's a, that's a big thing. The biggest matchup of all is I, I think your receivers are really, really good. I know your two headed running backs are really good and our linebackers are going to have their hands full. But I was looking at some of the catches that uh, Amezi and Carter, uh, and Carter made. Yeah. I mean, those guys are just incredible. We have a really good defensive backfield though. So I think that's going to be kind of the matchup to watch. I'm not worried about points. Um, I think both teams are going to put up some points. Mm -hmm. um, so all that said, I think it's, you know, like I said, it's going to come down to the last possession. I think whoever wins, the, it's easy to say, but whoever wins the turnover battle is going to win this yeah. football game. I got BC 27, NC State 24. And okay. uh, hopefully we don't storm, hopefully we don't storm the field. I'm very like, yeah. <laughs> storming the field against, you know, NC State. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see yeah. I totally get that. I mean, that's, that'd be, that'd be a, 
I think it's going to be like a three, four point game at the end of the day. It's yeah. uh, my worry has been historically, maybe before Doran, we just don't travel. We have not traveled well. Okay. Under Doran, the last few years, we really have. And yeah. that's been good. Um, I'm just, to me, when I think about what's on the line for this game, for the Atlantic division, I feel like there's more pressure on state than there is right now, than there is, than there is Boston College, because state's got yeah. the win against Clemson where Boston College doesn't. So Boston College really needs to beat state to really be able to say, well, now we've got the tiebreaker <laughs> over state. And if we can mm-hmm. just get a better record than them, we have the advantage. So yeah. that's what makes me nervous a little bit is the – you guys are going to – I think of the – okay, you're coming out of the Clemson game. That's a hangover potentially. But you got another ranked team coming in. We don't always seem to be so great against Boston College. And I, I that's what mm-hmm. – things that worries me. I feel like the only advantage we may have on – you know, from a – historical viewpoint is the fact that y'all have a backup quarterback right now. And that's really about yeah. it. Cause if y'all had Jerkovich at this point, I'd be very, I'd be very worried. For mm-hmm. sure. And, and and the one thing too, which I'll add to it, Matt, for sure is, I mean, you know, obviously for NC state, you know, all state fans have felt that burden that we have the longest drought championship drought that between baseball, basketball, and football, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't won a championship since 1992, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And 30 years. so, yeah. so that is, I mean, the Looking pressure's on season, for state. The pressure's like, on for I mean, state. I, I just hope and pray that honestly, it really does come down to that we want it more because we need it. Like, you know, it's not it, like we need it. Like Boston College at the end of the day, I mean, again, I'm not saying by any means that it's just it's 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 a matter you've of You've been like, there before you've been there sooner than we you've have. Been there. You've, you've been there. You've been there before we have. So but again, at the end of the day, <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, all I'm gonna say is I'm I'm not sitting here saying if you get it like shame on you for getting it, hey, if you get the win. Good for you. I mean, I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I hope you guys go on and win it, you know? So, uh, so, but you know, it, it, it'll be an awesome game. Let's put it that way. It's going to be a huge game. It's going to be a crazy game. Yep. And I just, to- I way, could totally see a guy like Zay Flowers just because he's playing a North Carolina team, just like going on. Recruit yeah. me. I'm going to go off on you kind of thing. He's due. He's due. He hasn't had his breakout yeah. game yet. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But see, I say the same thing though about, um, so Zay Flowers kind of, is he more of a deep? He's the deep threat guy. I know that. Is he? But does he play the slot? Uh, he can do. He does both. We line him up both. But really, where he's hurt teams the most is there's just those go routes, okay. and he just deep. burns. Yeah. and he's a big play threat anytime he's yeah. on the field. We try to get him involved in the sweet game. It's kind of like a Percy Harvin. We try to get just get him the football, however we yeah. can. Yeah, because you mentioned you mentioned uh, right. you you were impressed with Amezi and Carter the catches to make. And honestly, as state fans, we have been too because we knew what he had in Amezi, but I think yeah. in particular Carter. Carter's taking his game to another level. But yeah. having said those two receivers, you mentioned the breakout game for Zay Flowers. I think you should be interested in Thayer Thomas because people could argue he's like your best receiver, receiver on State's team, and he's not had his game yet. So similar to Zay Flowers, I could see State trying to integrate more Thayer Thomas in this game. Uh, and he's like that Julian Edelman guy. Yeah, yeah, kind of yes, a Wes yeah. Welker of the team, if you will. Yeah. So it's like, got it. Yeah. He's, but he, he's just like, if you throw the ball to him, he's, he's the most automatic like receiver, in my opinion. Like, yeah. he's money. But they he's, don't yeah, for some reason. They're, I think other teams have been daring Devin Carter and Amezi to be the receivers for State. So like they know mm-hmm. Thayer Thomas is the guy. He's a smaller. He's not, he's not a big dude, but he's just, his hands are so good. So it's, yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see who wins that between a Flowers and a Thomas battle on the receiving side. I think his Flowers will probably win that, but it's just, it'll be interesting from a receiver standpoint. Yeah. Definitely. That's true. Well, thank you all so much again for tuning in. Please make sure, again, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that free subscribe button. It really helps support us on the channel. Please also make sure, too, if, uh, if you want to, go go give Matt and uh, Fourth and Dude, uh, uh, you know, and check them out and uh, give them a follow uh, on their uh, on their Twitter, Fourth, the number Fourth, and Dude on Twitter, uh, and uh, check them out. Also, too, check them out on all their all major uh, podcast platforms. And uh, so thank you so much again, Matt, for joining us. Really do appreciate your time. Yeah, it was awesome meeting you guys. We'll talk soon. Yeah, we'll have a game on Saturday. Yeah, we'll looking forward to it. Thank you all again. And as always, good pack, y'all.